things. Remember this? A few years ago I did a video on this. This is a Prospero X1 Bitcoin mining rig. And it was a while before it turned up, and when it did turn up, it eventually started mining. And it was mining until 2016, middle of 2016, when the power supply went bang. And at the time, Bitcoins weren't worth an awful lot, uh, certainly compared to now. Um, so I just didn't bother. I just left it as it is. Now, that was then, though. If you look at the prices today, as you can see, it was actually mining a fair few bobs worth of Bitcoin at the time. Now, the difficulty has gone up since then. So I don't know how whether it's worth mining with this still. But... Um, I'm going to try and let's take a look at what's going on with this power, with the power supply on the back of this unit. And like I said, what it does, it, it went fat. If you plug in um, a power lead, it blows the fuse in the power lead. So this is the, the power supply. It's a Sunshine Electronics AP187 and 12 volts 11.7 amps and 5 volts 3 amps, uh, 5 amps, sorry. And I want to take a look, see if I can fix this, which I doubt it. It's a switch mode power supply. They, they, I don't like meddling with switch mode power supplies. They bite. So I'm going to take a look, but I'll also try and see if I can't get this to work. If it's not a simple fault in this, if it's not obvious, as in if it's not something that's clearly burnt out on the board, then uh, the next option is to try and get this working on a, a different power supply, such as a PC power supply. And for size comparison, that's a PC power supply. It just looks like a bigger version of it. So let's start by cracking this power supply open. I'll put the miner to one side. Let's see what's going on here. Right, there we go. Now this is going to be one of those videos where you'll see the difference between uh, an electronics engineer and an electronics hobbyist. Uh, I am not an electronics engineer. I am very much a hobbyist. I am an IT engineer. So we've got here, looks like a bodge wire going from there down. Okay, let's Let's start at the beginning. How's my solder? Right, my solder ends up to temperature. Let's get the bridge rectifier removed so I can test it out the circuit. And what I can actually do then is test it with a, a lead in, which just makes sure that the uh, the input state that the fault isn't actually there in this first in this first stage. Um, while I get the lid off, it's a quick look over, uh, and there's nothing obviously looking burnt out in there. Right, something definitely went on this power supply and you know, I can't be bothered to try and fix it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take away uh, enough of the components to be able to just drive the 5 volt and 12 volt supplies through from an external connector uh, up to the front and conveniently right up in there in the power supply I don't know if you can see it down there you'll be able to see it when I when I take these off the um, the connections are actually labeled those connections are all 5 volt uh, except there are two which are out on their own I'm not sure what they go to if anything um, then you've got the ground and then you've got the 12 volt so that's handy they're nicely um, Nicely marked up. So let's get some components off. Okay, I may have got a little carried away and stripped the entire board. Um, simply because I wanted room on the top side to fit this 13 amp fuse for the 12 volt 11.7 uh, amp rail and this 5 amp fuse for the 5 volt 5 amp rail. And I've got a couple of connections there. That's where the ground will be. This is where 12 volts will come in. And there's a hollow connection there, which is the 5 volt connection. That's the one which bridges across to here and down and to there. The cable arrived today. And 
as you can see, the color coding bears no relation to what it actually is on an ATX power supply, which is a lot more varied than that. Uh, okay, you get you do get some ATX power supplies which actually have uh, all black connectors, so it's better than nothing. But I'm going to pop the pins out that, I, that uh, in fact, I'll probably end up popping all the pins out, which is not as easy as as you'd think. They don't all just snap out easily enough, um, like that one, because there's little pins, there's little catches on the side which need to pop out. So I'm going to strip all the connections out of there and find the ones I actually need based on the pinout for this and reassemble it with uh, just the 12-volt, uh, the 5-volt and ground and the, uh, the power-on connection. Right, that's the bit I don't need. That's one of the bits I do. Plus I found this 4-pin connector as well, which I can use on the auxiliary 12-volt uh, connection that's on the power supply, uh, because I've got an extra two 12-volt connections then. I didn't realize until doing this that the ATX pin, uh, the ATX uh, pin out only has two 12-volt pins. So I've got an extra two there. And what I want to do with this is, this I will use in with the, um, with the, the power on signal and I'll join these together with a switch. So the only way the power supply can turn on is if this is plugged in and this. So it's got to have the extra connection. And I found this nice little switch as well, which will fit nicely into the old slot occupied by the, um, by the clover leaf plug. So the only thing I need to do to be able to get that to fit is cut the edge off the circuit board because the circuit board does actually come up to um, the, the switch will foul the circuit board if it's in place. So I'm going to notch a chunk of that out. Here it is all wired up and test it, well partly tested, I haven't tested with the power supply yet. Uh, I've just made sure that the connections go where they should do. I haven't got any shorts between ground and 5 and 12 volts which would be uh, which would let the magic smoke out. The switch incidentally is weird because where it's got it's got a symbol on one location, that symbol actually means it's off. On the one with no symbol, that means it's on. So uh, there we go. Anyway, just put the lid on that now and let's test it. I guess I should have done this years ago. And the trouble is the mining difficulty increases over time. As you can see, the mining pool was paying out 0.1 bitcoins every two months to start with, then it was every three months, then it started jumping up to every six months, and the final step before the power supply blew up, it took six months to mine 0.04 bitcoins. And that was in September 2016. Fast forward to now, where it's February 2021, and it'll take nearly four years to mine 0 0.001 Bitcoin. And that's based at the current rates. You have a look at this next year, and that three years, you're never going to get to the end of that three years and ten months payout period. It's just not going to happen, not with this. So it's not really worth mining with it anymore. But it was worth taking a look just to see what uh, what was wrong with the power supply, not that I found out, but to see that, that it could actually be converted, or that I, I could have converted it five years ago to work with the PC power supply. So I, uh, I hope someone finds this useful. Probably not because it's more academic than anything else now. And as a final footnote, it turns out that the uh, the Black Arrow Prospero X1 wasn't such a scam after all, and okay, they delayed it, and it would have mined a lot more had they shipped it when they promised to, but the mining that it did, that 0.6 bitcoins, as it turns out, it, it kind of paid for itself. Thanks for watching.